Frank, I don't care what you say. We're buying one of these flamethrowers. I'm linking it to you. We can split it halvesies and keep it at my house. Just like oh, this. No, okay. <laughs> okay, we ready to start? Yeah. Hell yeah. It's not a it's not a bitch ass propane one either. You actually put gasoline in it. What's Greetings, up, ladles, jelly spoons, and all other non-binary kitchen utensils. Joey, shut the fuck up. This is Gravy Wheels. Welcome to this episode of Gravy Wheels. I'm Joey. Shut the fuck up. This is Gravy Wheels. Welcome to Gravy Wheels. I'm Frank. How are your Gravy Wheels? Uh, How's it going, guys? It's going, dude. It's early for I just us realized, to do this. It is. I just realized that I changed my my headphones. So I look a little different. What do you got now? These are Turtle Beach something. They sent them to me for free, so I should know. Look at I that. can't find the box. Look at that man of the gods. What is that? What the hell is that? I don't know what that is. That's fucking is it red wine? It's fucking nine in the morning. <laughs> okay, Bert. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can't I can't find the box, but shout out to Turtle Beach or some ad agency guy that sent them to me. It was really weird. I was tweeting about microphones. About like microphone recommendations. And um a guy that follows me that I've worked with in the past was like, hey, I work with them. I can send you a, a, a free unit of whatever. And then they sent me a microphone that was different than the one they were talking about. And then they also sent me these new um, Turtle Beach headphones. And then I messaged them. I was like, hey, not that I care, but like you you did send me a different microphone. Because like I, I was like, I didn't know if they wanted me to like post a picture of that because they supply they lines. Yeah, a different one. I didn't know what was going on. But um, and then now they haven't messaged me back. So they gave me free gear and now I haven't. Heard. It's crickets. So I don't know. These are something. <laughs> There's something. I am I'm currently using the Moondrop Chew IEMs, which if you watch uh, Critical on YouTube, then you've probably heard of these. Critical, never heard. He maintains a giant list of like of uh, frequency frequency response graphs for uh, in ear headphones. So it's like a huge ah. ranking list. There's like over a thousand different headphones on there that he's, you know, compiling. He's like that guy that tested out for. like all the energy drinks and the guy that tested out all of the ramen. It's just for earwax. So does he have like a little, uh, he has microphones inside of like a skull thing and he puts them. I, I think that's, I think that's the setup he has. Yeah. He has what some a sort of nerd. That's what he does, man. Does my mic still pick up my voice enough up there? Yeah. Sadly, yes. Okay. But any, it's, but these things are tw these these earbuds cost twenty bucks and they sound incredible. So, big recommend. Guys, it's hard to find these days. I got some some big huge gaming news right now. What? <gasps> Breaking. Uh, she Hulk. Peach and Rosalia and all the Mario characters will have to wear burkas because Saudi Arabia bought five percent of Nintendo. That I saw that this morning when I woke up, and that's literally the first joke I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So there's that. That's interesting. Um, I guess we won't be seeing Super Princess Peach two anytime soon. So are you saying that Game Pass is coming to the Switch? I heard that there's a new edition of Skyrim that they're gonna come out for the Switch. <laughs> No, what here's here's the most important gaming news of the week is that yesterday being Tuesday uh was the dead the event Dead by Daylight held for their 6th anniversary. And as part of that event, they announced, you know, new characters, new DLC, new shit, you know, the sort of the normal stuff that you would expect, balance patches, all that stuff, but they're also finally making a dating simulator where you can date the killers. <laughs> a selection of the killers at least. Wow. It's called Hooked on You, and it's got a hot version of Trapper, hot version of Wraith, hot version of Huntress, hot version of Spirit. 
Hmm. So if you if you're one of those people that tweets at behavior all the time, add sex to DBD, then your wish is finally coming true. Is that a thing? People do that? People are real horny for the Dead by Daylight characters, yeah. It's kind of hysterical. Some of them, if I remember correctly, some of them do got a whole lot of ass. Some of them have some ass, yes. But, like, all the killers are fucking murderers. But the th one of the things that people They're have lobbied for the longest... Looking, I mean, some of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, people have been asking for a shirtless Michael Myers skin for forever. Well, <laughs> obviously. I had a and very filthy joke and I can't remember it now. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Jason's like, he's like, probably. it's like his Tinder profile is like, well, polyamorous, pansexual, cat dad. I have an automatic litter box. <laughs> You're just, are you describing yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty fucking close. <laughs> I, what we're finding out here is that Frank is actually Jason Voorhees. Yeah. I probably actually get some get some that way. Get some. Well, I see your printer's not uh being used currently. It's leaving money I on the you table. Were forever printing. It is going. It's going right now. Oh. Oh, it is I actually. Sure it wasn't moving there for a second. Must have been doing a fine detail spot. Yeah, I'm about to fucking break that thing, though. Okay. Oh, oh no, hold on, hold on. Like, from... Okay. So I printed something They're... special off the other day. I'm scared. <laughs> a, uh... uh a a holder skull full of liquid IVs? Your... Yeah. My Kool-Aid. Oh. Are those Hawaiian punch packets single serve? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's okay. I just imagine Adult. a scenario where you like bring a chick over and she sees your skull full of single serve Kool Aid packets <coughs> and thinks, I'm definitely blowing this guy tonight. She should see the one that I three printed for the bedroom. It's a it's a fetus that holds condoms. <sighs> I think yeah. The, if if that's the first red flag you see when Frank takes you home, then you are, fuck, you're already lost. That's true. There was probably like nine just on the car ride from the bar to the house. So, and not including all the red flags at the bar. You didn't notice the painted, the, vehicle. the painted portrait of Alex DeLarge in the background? Lots Another red flag. Here. Lots. You didn't listen to anything he said? Oh, stop hey. doing that, you fucking droog. That is so... I can't... <gasps> stretching. I'm trying... I'm just stretching. So what have you guys been playing? Evil Dead. The, the, the name of our podcast should have been, What Have You Guys Been Playing? And then we proceed to not talk about anything that the channel's supposed to be about. Well, we don't talk about gravy wheels. Do we have any... Is the channel supposed to be about anything? No. We're the Seinfeld so. of podcasts. Uh, we've I, I know we've all at least dabbled in Evil Dead. Yeah. I'm anxious to get back on. We're, we're going to be playing some after this, I think, is the plan, right? Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm excited for that. I, I just played some of the single player. Well, I played the first mission, and I got pretty far in it, but ended up, uh, ended up dying towards the end. And that was on PC, and then I realized that uh, I really want to play through those little single-player story missions. So I got the game on Xbox and just waited until that was installed because I want to get achievements uh, for playing through the game on that console instead of playing it on PC. So I haven't actually played it since then, but it's installed on the Xbox and ready to go. I'm excited. They, those, uh, those, they kind of act as tutorials, I guess, to sort of get you used to the game, but... Yeah, the um, they do unlock stuff for you, so you do have a good incentive to play them. That's what I heard. Yeah, that you get some cool, cool unlocks. They, I just, I was really impressed at how well they pulled off like the essence of the movie when you're playing through that first mission and the first time you're in like spirit mode or whatever it is. I think it's called the I demon. Mean, yeah, yeah, but like when you're, like how when you're just walking 
it, it kind of the camera like goes like that, like the camera, like the camera angles did in the original movie, and just the, all the little sound effects and the background uh, noises and shit. It's just really it, it. If you're a fan of the movie, it's definitely, it definitely hits some, some uh, of the similarities. No, they they really nailed the sort of ambiance of the whole thing. Like. Yeah. It's like, um, I remember playing the Star Wars Battlefront games, the the more recent ones, not the originals. And when you would get into those, all the sounds, all the sights, everything was just like, this is Star Wars to a T. And that's pretty pretty much what they've done with the Super Dead game, which is, I mean, that's a pretty big accomplishment in itself. They just need to like, for sure, allow you to mantle more things. Um, Maybe a way to just fucking just, give a player on your team as a sacrifice to the demon because some people are just so fucking shitty. Um, always grab it's, your uh, matches. Use that pink F. It's a... Uh, <sighs> what is the it's pink good. F I, It's like XP that you get in a match. And so okay. your characters level up outside of matches. There's like a skill tree that you can put points into. Right. But also in matches... There's a separate sort of little leveling system, and you use the pink F to, you know, improve your melee abilities or oh, that's how right, much health yeah. you have, shield, stuff like that. Right, right, right. It's good. I think it's entertaining. I enjoy it, and then but you I do slam sodas for health. I do wonder uh, what the longevity of the game is going to be like, just because it seems a little too straightforward to involve like a lot of depth you know but we'll see oh um, shut up i have oh been God. in like it's happened once for sure maybe it's happened twice so where like a fear gets too high and then i've ran to a um a was your match is full hanging in a tree and whenever you do the light the torch or the lantern like animation you get stuck and clipped under the tree and the only way yeah. to get out is to be killed and then you have to be revived to not be clipped in the tree anymore which that's fun it seems like there's a decent yeah. amount of clipping uh, issues and it's in, it's uh, rough um, it's a little rough i tried to mantle a fence and got stuck and i was only able to get out when a skeleton came over to me, and then I did a finisher on it, and my model moved out enough that I was able to get back to normal. But yeah, it's 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 got bugs. I mean, it's buggy, but it's still pretty fun. It's nice and spooky. It's fun. I'm not really a fan of the scary stuff, but it's not bad. Mainly, it's not really like... I don't think of it as a scary game, really, but... No. You, it's really pretty. I haven't played it on my Xbox yet, but on PC, like... All the lighting and everything looks really, really good. So it's I beautiful. Uh, I cheated on mine. I cranked the brightness up. I've I've been playing on my PS5 on my little screen, and then so oh, I yeah. changed the settings on the screen to make it more brighter than what the because uh, hacks you you can't like see shit in some of the buildings, and I've got yeah. a bad habit of just leaving my uh, flashlight on the entire time. And so I can see. Are you like always running out? Yeah. But now I've figured out that you don't have to. If I have it on like the hat, <laughs> instead of me just having my flashlight on, because items will not pop up if you don't use the flashlight. So yeah. You just go in a room, kick on your flashlight, go around in a circle, and then shut it off. I noticed the, uh, the gore on one of the enemies I was fighting. He came at me. I don't remember if I shot him or swung an axe or something, some sort of a melee weapon, but like he was fi- he was more or less like his body was intact. And then after I hit him the first time and he came at me again, his fucking intestines were spilling out of his stomach, and that was that was really cool to see. Some of the gore is is a lot of fun. A lot of fear oh, yeah. boners. A lot of fear boners. You'll hit oh, hit a dude sure. in the face, and then like the next time you see him, his face is just kind of gone, and it's just a skeleton yeah. skull there. You know. Yeah. And carry around cool. your girlfriend's head, like, on your fucking, just, it's like hanging on your waist, and she's, like, yelling shit at you while you're trying to slay a bunch of it's, demons. Just like Evil Dead. It's, you know, it's like the it's, movies. It's great fun. Yeah. Great, great fun. It's weird from my perspective, though, because I've seen Evil Dead, but I never watched any of the other ones afterwards. I never saw, like, 
the cheesy, the purposefully cheesy Bruce Campbell movies. And I know that like Andrew jerks off to these nightly, um, but I just haven't, I haven't seen those. So it is uh, a little bit weird only knowing Evil Dead and then seeing are you? Okay, stuff well, like that. I mean, fix that. you owe it, you I owe know, it to yourself to, to just watch them, man. Just I know, yeah. Army of Darkness is something you could watch with your kids. Like it's pretty tame. There's not like any right. really scary shit in it. Yeah. It's it's like ninety percent goofy. Ooh, fuck that bullshit Evil... though, because they added the, the thing. My the only thing I hate in that movie is the uh, the goddamn the little the little Bruce's, and they had put that in the game. Yeah. I remember, when I was a kid. That fucking freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> Dolly, are you okay? Uh, Sorry, my dog's losing her mind. I beat a game. I, I beat a game. I beat a game. What? Oh, I beat Uncharted, the first one. Oh, I'm glad that's over for you. You silly bitch. Yeah, and now I've been, I'm like three hours into the second one and I'm stuck. A three hour tour. The, that first one is a little rough. I, I think. I've never played any of the Uncharted series. That's pretty... probably enjoy them. Is it like an open world Tomb Raider kind of? No. No. Okay. More like Tomb Raider. No. This old. Well, like Just Tomb Raider, Raider, not open world. If you played the more recent Tomb Raider, like you know, there is a, like a little bit of overworld stuff in there. Like you have an area you can explore, and there are little crypts that you can go down into. Uncharted is not like that. Uncharted is like pretty straightforward. You have a level, you play through the level. Oh, okay. But it's like really well produced, so there are cool set pieces and. It's it it feels very like Indiana Jones, very the mummy, you know, that kind of thing. Right on. Um Brendan Frazier. Yeah, the yep. last the last fight, uh No last, Tom Cruise. Last boss in that one was pretty bad. <laughs> so wait, no, what is that though? Because there is like a Tom Cruise Return of the Mummy I saw on a streaming service. What is that? Yes. It's no a version of the no mummy. I watched it. Of like I saw it I saw it in theaters, motherfucker. So <laughs> Really? But was it good? <laughs> it was not bad, yeah. It was alright. So they took the Brennan Fraser masterpiece classic and redid it. Okay. Do you do you want do you want the whole explanation to this? There's a lot going on here. I don't. Oh, I'm excited. I'm strapped. Uh. Up. So when the MCU started and everybody was like, "Holy shit! Shared movie universes print money. We got to do this." Everybody was like, "We're gonna do this." DC is like, "We're we got our version of this." Universal's like, what do we have laying around? And they're like, we have all the classic monsters. So we're going to try to make the Dark Universe, which is going to have involve the mummy. The mummy was supposed to be like the thing that kind of launches it. It was mummy and then like Dracula Untold. And uh, I think maybe they tried to like retcon the Wolfman movie into it. And they had like all these movies lined up that they wanted to make for it. And this was supposed to kick it off like, um, who else was in there? Uh... Russell Crowe is in The Mummy, The Mummy remake with Tom Cruise. And I think he plays Dr. Jekyll. So, like, they had big plans for this, and it all just, like, with that one. So they were going to do, like, some reboots just to, like, kind of revitalize IPs and then mash them all together? Yeah, they were going to have, like, a big... That could have been really (coughs) fucking cool. I think it could have been super fun. But... Hmm. Uh, I will say one great thing that came out of that movie, though, is that they made a game adaptation of it called The Mummy Demastered. And it's like a game in the style of like 16-bit Metroid games. And it's really good. It's really solid. It's got great like, kick-ass music. It's very fun. I don't know if that whole like multiverse thing really appeals to me. I've never really been... I don't know. I can't think of like a, a universe where... There's characters that excite me that they would all be like playing together. Fair enough. I mean, it seems kind of gimmicky to me, unless it's just been in a bunch of different. I, but I, I guess I just said that the, like the mummy and Dracula and stuff could have been cool if done right. So, I guess I'll eat my own fucking words. It it could have been fun, but right. yeah, it just and didn't happen. They're gonna do an Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein remake. Yes. With Seth Rogen and James Franco and Randy Quaid? What? Do you remember the Three Stooges movie they made a couple of years ago? That was like dog shit. Ago? That was absolute fucking dog shit. That was so horrible. I didn't How see do you, it. You I remember that? seeing stuff about it. I did not see it either. 
That's uh, what we're gonna deal with for a while. Reboots on reboots on reboots on reboots. You know what they can't But reboot? I'm wondering if this, I'm wondering if this whole like era that we're in of just like reboots, if eventually it's gonna get to the point where you know like Hollywood always flip flops. They do the opposite of each other once like one thing tires itself out. So I'm wondering if this is gonna tire itself out, and then there's just gonna be a whole lot of like new stories out of nowhere that have nothing to do with anything else and we're like completely done with reboots for a while we might get some good shit i don't think so like studios want to bet on existing properties because they know there are already people that care about They're that proven. shit yeah exactly you know it's the same reason why it's hard to make new big budget video games you don't see them as much as you would like it's it's all sequels I'm sure it's an analytics game. They just look at like the last movie that was in that genre and they say, okay, we, you know, a hundred million people saw this shit. So even if we only capture 20% of that audience that existed before, we're safe because we're going to make it for this much money, all that kind of shit. Speaking let's of make cheaper, let's make cheaper movies. <laughs> like your movies don't need to cost a hundred million dollars how the CIA funnels drug money. I have the watched... The CIA doesn't need that much drug money. Go on, sorry. I have watched six of the Harry Potter movies now. I stay up till three. Why? I just stay up oh till three God. or four in the morning. This is why? I watch, I this watch is why it. your schedule's fuck <laughs> Harry fucking Potter? Harry Good Potter. Lord. I watched that Pickle movie with Seth Rogen. That was a travesty. Um, I tried watching some of that and I couldn't get very far. It was it was a real tearjerker at the end, but uh, um, and then I watched um, a movie starring Sean William Scott and Randy Quaid last night. Uh, Gary the tennis coach, very fucking horrible. Uh, I've, I'm on season five of The Real World. I'm sorry, I think the title of that movie is Balls Out. Whatever. What did I say it was? Goofballs. Gary the tennis coach. Yeah, balls out, Gary the tennis coach. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, uh... I think I worked in a movie rental store when that came out on DVD, and I was like, I saw so many movies come through there that they ordered like a hundred copies of that I had never fucking heard of, and I was a <laughs> giant movie nerd, so I was really baffled when I would see, you know. 50 copies of beer for, Toby Keith's Beer for My Horses show up on DVD. <laughs> Speaking of all that shit you're watching, Frank, have you finished Ozark yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a good... It's definitely up there with one of my favorite TV shows. It is. I don't think that they really get like the white trash down though. That like is actually lives down there. They get really close to it, but they don't. They, like, I, I, get it I think they captured it. I think they gave some of it a little more credit than it deserved. To be honest, there's no one that fucking sophisticated running drug money for the cartel down there. KC Mafia trash was using the Lake of the Ozarks to launder a shit ton of money back when they first flooded it in. Right. Did, did you guys see Winter's Bone all those years ago when it came out? No, but it was Brian's like, Winter. Rest in peace, Kevin huh? Paulson. No, I have not. Never mind. I don't. I, don't I was going to ask how you felt about the depiction of Missouri in that, but have you seen the Four Billboards movie? I have not. No. That was okay. Missouri is like a really shitty state. And it's very hard to make a movie showing exactly how shitty it is. I think I those think aren't got close. Missouri and Kansas both get that treatment, I think. I feel like they made it sound like Ozark was like a hour and a half drive from uh, Chicago, though. Because that entire, especially the last season, like they're just constantly like, Chicago... Ozark, Chicago, Ozark, Chicago, Ozark. And they never show them, like, getting on a plane or making a long drive. It's like, that's not... So I feel like everybody that watched that show now is just going to have this misconception that if you're in Chicago, you can make it to the Ozark in, like, a half-hour trip or some shit. Spoiler alert, it's not, if you're listening. No, and you were it super isn't. 
It's like, I think it's like 12 hours or 14 hours. Or maybe It's at least nine. Eight. Eight. There's it's, a movie. It's a bit. There's a movie called Shotgun Stories that's set in Arkansas. And I remember when I saw that, I was thinking, uh, this, this is maybe the best Midwest I've seen in a movie. Hmm. Well, but people like Minnesota and shit and Idaho, like they don't consider us being the Midwest. They said they consider Kansas and Iowa the cutoff of the Midwest. I know Oklahoma and Missouri are in the South. They think that Missouri is part of the South. I mean, it wishes it was. Some of it does, yes. It's always funny to me, like people that I know from Florida and other states say y'all and like those country, you know what I mean? All those country tropes way more than anybody I've ever heard here in Missouri say stuff like that. No, a hundred percent. I don't say it at all. Like I say y'all. I say y'all. I know you do. I open up the door for fucking all sorts of people at the grocery store. Like here y'all go. All the fucking here y'all go. I've lived in New York city for the last decade and I still, my still go to greeting is howdy. (laughs) <laughs> howdy duty, partner. Howdy. Yeah, that's an interesting. I don't say howdy. I don't say always. Y'all. It's always howdy for me. Would you like a sarsaparilla? I would love some. A piece of gooseberry pie. Fuck gooseberries. Why did you guys cut down the gooseberry bush behind your house? It was so far gone by the time I bought this house. There was just a line of like 40 trees where the gooseberry plants used to be. Maybe I should replant them. Maybe I'm going to sue you for it, and I'm going to hire She-Hulk attorney at law. Why would you sue me? (laughs) (laughs) I only saw screenshots of that. I don't even know what's happening. Is that like a standalone movie, or is it just a character in an upcoming It's May, not April. What the fuck? It's a TV show. And it's all around that character? It's based on that character? Yeah, it's based on that character set in the MCU, you know, all that <sighs> stuff. They had to they had to fill that gender void for the for the fucking quarter. Yes, like, yeah, she's she's been around for, she's been around since the seventies, but let's complain about it now. <laughs> oh yeah, and everybody's heard of her. Yeah. It's just a coincidence Shh. that I fucking she got her own show in twenty twenty two. I love everybody, She-Hulk, right? everybody wanted it, Andrew. You're totally right. Hey. <laughs> I had Hero Clicks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the that only I had person that owns one of those She Hulk uh, Hero Clicks. Did no, nobody else got down on Hero Clicks except for me, though, huh? I tried, I didn't have any. but too stupid. Yeah. Oh, that um, was Pogs. And you ate half of those. I need. Mommy. Hold on. I got to lay out. I, I don't have any celebrity crushes or anything, but the closest thing I have to a celebrity crush is the fictional character of She Hulk. And I will cop to that. Be engorged. Fuck that Natalie Portman Thor or whatever that shit. She's looking nice, dude. You know how hard she could jerk you off? Did you see her biceps? The she would squeeze your, the, your dick and the tip of it would just would shoot out like a cork. <laughs> With cum though. The tip of your dick and cum just everywhere. And mostly blood though. Mostly blood. Let's not. Yeah, would you still rather fit fuck Superwoman or She Hulk? I have no at the same time, man. No, all right. So the root of my attraction to She-Hulk is that she is a powerful woman. She's like she's really fucking smart, and she's like cares about what she does. She's an attorney. So you're going down the BDSM She's a defense path. attorney. Andrew huh? submissive is what we're learning. <laughs> oh, I would have copped to that too. That's just that's just how it is. Um, Power bottom. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just really want to see a scene in that show where she and daredevil do, are in the same courtroom together and have to like go against each other that'd be really fun that daredevil was actually a pretty good tv show i also so that's like all disney rights from what i saw in that trailer there was some racy things kind of being said about thick green asses and stuff <laughs> that's right they're leaning into it watch the trailer at the end of the trailer sh- she's on a date and she's like the guy's like, do you want to split some fries? And she's like, let's get those to go. And then the next shot is her oh carrying him across her living room. Like, in her, in her arm, in her giant green arms. What's the shit rated? 
X. NC-17. Fucking. Can't wait to see some Hulk pussy. I'm psyched. that This is like... Okay, but I'm, I've been excited for this show for a long time. Also, Tatiana Maslany is just really great and fun to watch. I don't know if you've seen Orphan Black, but she's oh, awesome. She's Speaking of television things, did you guys know that they like didn't stop making Robot Chicken like a thousand years ago? That there's like I think we new episodes. I think we talked about this not too long ago, but. I, I realized that not too long ago myself. I haven't watched them, though. Is it still good? Like, some of them that I saw were, like, really good. Granted, I was probably really fucking high, but, like, they were Allegedly. funny. They were funny as shit. I've got a prescription right for stuff, so I can legally take GHB. I mean, South Park still hits to this day, if you ask me. You know, it's not every episode, but there's still some good... I, they're, like, it's so much... It's funny how much crazier, like, the, um, it, it's more about storytelling now than it was, obviously. Like, they're, yeah, they've definitely evolved. The stories are pretty elaborate these days uh, in I'm an, South Park. I'm an adult man, so I don't watch cartoons. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I just want to fuck She-Hulk. You just watch professional yeah. wrestling. I don't watch professional wrestling. I watch stuff about professional wrestling. Oh, you don't actually sit down and watch it? No. Who's got time to watch a fucking like ten hours of wrestling content every week? Did I did I link you guys? I don't know if I I linked you guys or my other group chat. Um it was like there's like a show on A and E or something where um ex professional wrestlers go looking for like relics of the time. So they like went back and found, um, they went back and found Kane, Kane's, Kane's original, original mask. mask. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's cool. I know a lot of that stuff is like just lost though. Yeah. When you think about how poorly most wrestlers' lives turn out after you know their time in the ring, like it doesn't surprise me that there's a lot of that stuff is gone. People probably don't so want to remember. Buy. Yeah, and that. Yeah, you know, they get painkiller addictions, all kinds of stuff like that. It's 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 not a great retirement program. What was the story with? Uh, I think it was maybe Jake the Snake and the Iron Sheik, and like Jake didn't have a fucking didn't have a ride from the airport to go wherever, so the Iron Sheik drove them, and they were driving through like Alabama or somewhere, and the Iron Sheik was just like drinking beer and driving. And then they get pulled over, and they find, like, a bunch of coke on, like, one of the guys. That sounds right to me. I don't sounds know that. Right. I don't know that specific story, but... Yeah. Uh, what's the... Um, the massive one that's, like, known for just slamming coke? Is it Brock Lesnar? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Who's that? Fuck. Ben I Ross can't remember. I mean, is, but... Jake the no, Snake I'm... had a really bad drug problem for many, many years, drugs and alcohol, I'm but he finally got that sure under control. Was Brock Lesnar. So much Thanks to wrestling it. saint Diamond Dallas Page. Jake the Snake I was... would just like be. He would. Act, everybody was so used to him being fucked up and passed out. He would just act like he was passed out, like in the room with them. And then they would like talk about how they were gonna like fight the match or whatever. And then he would actually be conscience and then he would use that in the fights i heard that he was yeah he was very talented you know he just had a lot of he just had some really dark 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 ears i had a uber driver one time telling me that he had he was like yeah it, could, I, it always comes up like what do you do whatever and i'm like yeah i'm here because i play video games and then they start telling me about people that they drive and he was telling me that um every time brock lesnar comes in he would or actually, it wasn't an Uber driver. It was, like, one of those black car services. So they deal with, like, high-end clientele in, like, L.A. and shit. And he was telling me how uh, every time Brock Lesnar comes in, he requests him specifically. Because, like, the first time, <laughs> he just drove him around. And he had, like, a little, like a like a lunchbox just full of cocaine and other drugs. And he was just always super fucked up. And, like, since this driver was more or less okay with it and, like, didn't rat him out that he requests him every time. And he was just telling me how fucking wild that guy gets. 
where he's like just uh, he would always just tell him to like drive him to pussy and so he would drive him somewhere where he could get pussy and do cocaine out of his lunchbox so i don't know how true that is but that's what my driver in la one time told me yeah i don't know about i don't know about brock lesnar having wellness policy issues but uh... <laughs> yeah who knows yeah oh god oh my god he really he really is a does have a problem with uh with the old drugs substances i don't know i don't know about him what 30 minutes by the wwd after his post-match drug test so they have to have drug tests after the fight and <laughs> not before the fight we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna drug test you after the fight to see what the fuck you were on yeah, we, we want, want it to be to good. <laughs> yeah, but then we're gonna punish you if you do it not okay. Makes sense. It checks out. And if you get sixty-eight concussions, that's fine too. Oh my god, that CTE baby! Speaking of CTE, they're uh, rebooting the XFL in twenty twenty-two. The Rock posted on his Instagram yesterday. I did, which I I'm excited about. This, like, he, they did this two years they ago. They did. And, uh, yeah, but COVID fucked that. But if you watched any of those games, they actually were pretty entertaining because, like, a fucking player will be, like, breaking away for 80 yards about to score a touchdown and then, like, fumble the ball on the fucking, you know, before right before the goal line. Just, like, royally fuck up and the camera will go right over and be like, so what happened? And then the player's just, like, you know, fuming fucking mad and got a camera in his face. It makes for really good football. And they do the same thing with the coaches. So they're, like, on the sidelines with the coaches. You know, because, like, with the NFL, you see the coach throwing a clipboard and, and cussing, or you're guessing that he's cussing. But, like, the XFL, they're actually trying to capture that shit, so I hope that they, uh... But it's new ownership now, so we'll see if it changes any, but some of the stuff they were doing was pretty cool. So that's That could be fun, I guess. I would check that yeah. out. Yeah. It, it's not like whenever fucking Vince McMahon or whoever owned it, I guess, um, you know, they're not trying to say it's, like... Like, those old commercials back in the day, what was it, the early 2000s or 90s or whatever, when they first launched that shit, they were yeah. basically trying to say that it's, like, it's wrestling and football in one, you know, it's, they're not, it's not trying to, like, even claim that it's just a little bit different, different version of football. It'll be worth checking out now. I think, yeah, everybody's pretty sick of the NFL at this point. Yeah, it's interesting, that's for sure. The whole, the taunting rule is what kills me. Like, they're flagging Tyreek Hill for throwing up a peace sign while he scores a touchdown. Like, come on, man. I get, like, if you fucking smear somebody and you stand up and you, like, flip them the bird while they're on the ground Do the or DX, some shit. Like, crush chomp. Yeah. Like, they need to define taunting a little bit more, you know. Like, if you're instigating a fucking fight, sure, but... If you're throwing up a fucking peace sign while you're scoring a touchdown, come on, man. I remember there was a while where there was like really, really strict rules against celebrating, right? Like you couldn't do shit after you yeah, scored. Yeah, you couldn't do celebrations in the in the end zone. And now I think it's you can do anything as long as you don't use a prop, maybe or something. I don't remember. You can't use the yeah. ball as a prop anymore. You're, I don't remember. Well, they're I know, all fucking I think acting what started anyway. all that. If you've seen the last fucking Super Bowl, it is a prop. Listen, Linda. You're right, though. <laughs> fucking, it's horrible. And we pay these people like they're fucking, never mind, can't say that word. Um, they, they're, God kings? They're, yeah, they're beating themselves to fucking death. People shoot themselves in the fucking chest so their brain can be fucking studied for CTE. And they can't let them just, you know, have like a fucking synchronized dance move with the boys after a touchdown. Bullshit. No, they can now. Their their true passion is synchronized dance. And exactly. So, like, and they just all this, express that. All this football, all the sports playing, all the fucking hours and hours in the gym, fucking strict diets, all this stuff. It's just so they can get fifteen to twenty seconds of a choreographed dance number at in a end zone and then re-upload it to their tiktok after the game that's right it's all it's about only only with the express written consent of 
National of Football the League. NFL. Yeah, and then and then they use that to uh, promote their Twitch link so they can stream Call of Duty <laughs> and make donations and get ad reads. <laughs> So it's the world we're living in, man. You this is so, I was just going to say, this is so fucked up. <laughs> so you guys, like, like they have to have permission from the NFL to post certain things now, don't they? I would say so. I would assume so, yeah. Okay. It's not, even though it's them, it's not, you know, they don't have the rights to that footage. So there was some, um, there was some controversy in the bowling world in the last month and a half or so. And now to be like a member of the PWBA and the PBA, you have to sign an agreement that you will clear the social media posts through the governing body before you post them. Oh, fuck that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. I fucking, Chad Murphy, you're a dumb piece of shit, but that's USBC, not the PBA, but whatever. I could, but I could kind of understand when it's specific posts to that league or whatever. But are, if they're so, if they're saying like any social post, fuck that. Any social post from the PWBA. So, but what happened is there's been some controversy with manufacturing of the equipment recently, where um, some balls have like not passed, like they pass like the the manufacturing at the manufacturers, but whenever they're out in the field and they get tested, then they're actually too soft because their their durometer rules or their hardness rules. Well. Um, what had happened was it, a big event. They were testing bowling balls, but they had they were weren't letting you watch the testing happen. They were doing all the testing behind drawn curtains, like they literally set up like black curtains and perform the fucking tests, and you couldn't observe like your equipment actually being tested. And uh, an Australian posted that and said it was like bullshit. They find him, and then they change the fucking rules that you have to like. Uh, get all your social media posts approved by the governing body of the sport before you can... It's ridiculous. That's fun. And it's fucking bowling. Come on. It's throwing a rock at fucking sticks. It's stupid as I shit. I mean, just buy a fucking Wii like a real man and shut the fuck up, is my opinion, you know? Yeah. That sounds about right, yeah. Speaking of that, when does the new Wii Sports come out? Is that already out? It's out. It's not good. Is it... Really? They fucked it up? Did you play the early access one, Andrew? Did you do the weekend thing whenever you got to play it? There's like two weekends where you got to play it. No, I did not. I didn't get to play it because I think that I was on my trip during one of them. But I have I wanted to get into it for the memeing of it. Um, but there, I've I had bad reviews. I uh, what, what are the games? I, there's bowling. There's like a sword fighting one. There's tennis. And that's all I can remember. I know there's more, but I can't remember. But is there any way to use motion control to bowl? Yeah. Yeah, of course. With that all it's with, all motion control shit. With the little just the Joy Con detached? Yeah. Okay. I feel like the Joy Cons are kind of shitty as motion detection devices. They don't really they work less well than the Wii Motes did. And the Wii Mote like, Plus. I tried to play... I was really, really excited when they um, announced that they were going to do a remake of House of the Dead. I love those games. Played them in the arcade all the time as a kid. Super into it. I got the Switch version when it came out, the remake. And one, it, it runs at like 15 frames a second, so that sucks. Awesome. And two, like using the, the Joy-Cons for like the aiming controls, it's just it doesn't feel good. It feels slow. It feels really inaccurate. It's just like it's not... It doesn't feel at all like using the Wii Mote did. The Wii Mote felt pretty snappy, and like you pointed at something, and that was it. Um, which I guess makes sense because it had a camera in it, and it was all you know based around like IR sensors and stuff. But the Joy Con, the Joy Cons are purely like gyro controls. They have um, accelerometers, mm. and it's just it's just not good. It's just not good. You'd think they would have used that opportunity to come out with like a really good, uh, you know, like a Wii motion controller, but for the Switch and launch that alongside of the new sports game. Surprised they haven't. I'm really surprised that the Joy Cons haven't undergone a serious kind of revision. Overall. Yeah. Yeah. Not even just because of the drift stuff. 
which of course is an element, but like, so like put those things in your hand. They suck. They are not, they do not feel good in your hands to use. They're not comfortable to hold. The joysticks feel like shit. They have like no tension on them. It's, I don't know, bothers me a lot. And I don't like yeah. this, the shoulder buttons being those. That's why I have these fuckers. And look, look this is not for people, for my amputees, yeah. this is not. Well, not just that, but people with hands that are bigger than a child's. It, well, it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, not supposed I to. hardly ever use those. I just use my, like, one of the pro controllers. Those You're not supposed so to use them like that, Frank. Remember, there's another rail that comes with the slide on. Yeah, the little... Even though... But even when you have that little rail sl slid on, I mean, they're still, like... They're so fucking tiny. They're still shit. Yeah, I know. It's still, like, what? A third of the size of, like, an SNES controller? You know what I mean? I mean, they're, they're fucking small. I think it's a... I think that they were a good concept. I think that, like, they... I like that. That thing made more sense. Yeah. I like that. This yeah, thing is this like thing is okay, much. but it's like still the sticks don't oh, feel good. Yeah. So it's yeah. still not very fun to play with. Um but like I'm surprised that they just don't have any other options. It wouldn't like if they still came out with the regular Joy-Cons with if you bought a new console and they came with them, that's fine. That makes sense to me because that's like the way it was intended. Right. But why and isn't like there Joy-Cons? Yeah, exactly. Why isn't there an option for something else? Yeah. An official option for something else. Especially when that's kind of like, I feel like that's Nintendo's bread and butter, where, you know, for the longest time you couldn't get a third party dock. You had to get like the fucking $80 dock or whatever it was, you know? Yeah. And their peripherals are always pretty fucking expensive until, uh, until like Power A and, um, some of those others start doing the third-party controllers and everything. Do you remember how many of those, like, third-party controller brands there used to be? Like, I mean, there's still a lot, but... Only Mad Cats, or... I mean, are you talking about, like, that were mainstream? I guess there was a lot, but... There were a lot, yeah. yeah. I remember, you yeah. You didn't really there's... see many in stores other than, like, Mad Cats. You saw Mad Cats a uh, lot. I remember seeing a brand called Pelican around a lot. Yeah. Oh, Pelican, yeah. There was Pelican, Pelican. there's... You know, Hori has been around for forever. Hori makes some decent stuff now, though. Um, PDP is the one that I was, the other one I was trying to think of, the, uh, one of the currents. Yeah, that's one of the main ones now. Uh, Afterglow, was was that what those were called? Yeah, Afterglow. I still yeah. have one. They still, they still make Afterglows. They're nice. They're nice now? They were shit back then. Like the plastic is Yeah, they weren't that great back then. The, to me, the plastic feels like different. I've got an Xbox one. Okay. And it's all red. It actually like feels comfortable. It's just that the button is stuck, so the light always stays on now. So it's just <laughs> enough bother. Yeah. So whenever you play it, just like the whole room is fucking red. I don't think I don't think people realize that those were like pre RGB craze. You know what I mean? Like back then <laughs> I don't think there were any keyboards or mice or anything really that like lit up. So whenever no. the afterglows came out, the first time you saw an afterglow at like a buddy's house or some shit, you were like Oh shit! That controller light up. I gotta get one. Is like a clear, a, like a clear controller body with just like a little string of like LEDs that you could see <laughs> yeah. inside There's of it. Just, just like kinda four like... LEDs randomly placed. But I, I've always been like a huge fan of just, uh, of just see through electronics before there's even lights in them. I just think it's cool to be able to see the inner workings of stuff like that. I yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, that's, yeah. I really like my, I still have a purple Game Boy Color, the Atomic Purple. Mm -hmm. So good. Is it one of the see-through ones or one of the... Yeah, yeah, it's the see-through one. Yeah, those are, those are great. Those are classics. Like the Halo OG Xbox, that see-through green. Which you can barely see through that thing. But you the, could. You can. No, the plastic is pretty see-through. The thing is, is that it, in the OG Xboxes, there's just a big, uh, like, aluminum shell. Right in, you know, it, it houses all the electronics under that, so it just doesn't really look... <coughs> it, it doesn't uh, unlock its full potential because of that. They still look cool, though. There's some really nice modded ones that people throw LEDs in. Bring it back. 
I miss that shit. I, uh... I know. I asked an ex-girlfriend from a long, long time ago if I could have my Xbox back at <laughs> her parents' house. But it's an OG Xbox Which, that I had modified, yeah. and right. it had all the emulators and shit on there. It had... You play, we played Mario Kart on a fucking Xbox back in 2008. Nine. Was it just soft modded? I don't even know where the hell I got it from, but I guess I got it from one of you. Like, somebody we all, mean, after school was it, making them? I think they, I remember pro- going over to covers. All, yeah. Well, drop names. Um, I'll beep it out. We all... <laughs> we all... Uh, yeah, back in the so in the Halo CE days, I, be, I believe it was before Halo Two, when we were all younger and poor because we didn't have jobs, we all had Xboxes and we had a couple copies of Halo CE, but not everybody had it. And then I did some research and found out with an action replay kit and Mech Assault, it was Mech Assault or Mech Chaos Assault, Theory. Cell. Yeah, yeah. Um, those two, it, it's, it was a real simple process to soft mod an Xbox. So we all went and soft. I, I remember like we all had all our Xboxes in the basement that day. We soft modded all our Xboxes, copied the, because one of the, the first reason that we even did it was that you could, you could back up games to the hard drive. But once we found that out, we were like, oh shit, we don't have to buy, you know, fucking 16 copies of Halo. We can just soft mod everybody's Xbox with the same kit and, you know, uh, LAN parties and things, and they loaded CE faster off of the hard drive than off the CD. Yep, drive loaded too. a little bit faster, all that. I mean, it was like m- minuscule, but I remember back in the day, yeah, it was like, holy shit, it loads so much I remember faster. remember that day. I remember So that it was day. probably me that, that helped you soft mod that. It was in his basement. And I remember a bunch of us doing it, and I remember I was drinking vodka out of a water bottle so I wouldn't get caught. <laughs> Oh man! Do you remember there was a, a super long time ago? We went to a Halo tournament, and uh, that Halo was after 360? the Xbox. I yeah, I think so. And that was after the Xbox 360 had come out, and they were like, "You can't play Halo on the 360. You have yeah. to play on the original Xbox because like the tick rates were different or some shit." They're like, "You're hot. You're playing at higher frames per second, so it's no, nope, can't do that." <laughs> exactly. Like, no, you don't understand how emulation works. That's not. Yeah, no, That's it's actually not a thing. better to be playing it on the original <laughs> thing. I'm at a disadvantage because I'm playing it on a 360, but all right. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, and they had to give you guys yeah. government, standard government issue Xbox controllers. No, that was at the National Guard tournament. <laughs> yeah, that one was dog shit. That. Where they all, yeah, all the controllers were like Mad Cats, <laughs> but like Mad Cats with an S, like not even and off-brand, off-brand broken. controls. No garbage. one there had any idea what they were doing. Somebody that worked at the National Guard just was like, oh, I love Halo. I, I play Halo all the time. We should, the, the people love it. We'll, we'll have a Halo tournament and then we'll be able to sign a bunch of people up or whatever. And then, you know, they okayed it with their boss, but no one knew what the fuck was going on. We were playing on like terrible projection screens with input lag and off-brand controllers that were broken. And, they and we still somehow you ended up getting controller. second, so. It was trash. It was trash, yeah. but... But the one that we went to in KC was, it was more legit. That was like an actual land center company or whatever. I remember it was at like a, it was at like a, what was it? A Best Western or like a. Yeah, it was a like Best a American, I think. Or something. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. it's a, I remember it was in Northtown, Kansas City. And every time you would drive by that, that's one of those hotels that has the price of the hotel room on the sign. It's like thirty nine ninety five. Yeah, like the entire time I was a kid, it said $25. <laughs> so, like, that's the hotel we're dealing with. I do remember being somewhat impressed, though, because they did bring the Red Bull, Red Bull girls in at one point, and everybody got free Red Bulls, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. That, I mean, I, don't, I'm not gonna, I ain't going to kick a free Red Bull out of bed. No. I specifically remember that land party because I had to drive us. We're about an hour and a half from where that was, and I drove everybody in my big Dodge white conversion van with purple interior seats and curtains, and it was my first time driving long distance. I mean, an hour and a half when you're that young was kind of intimidating for me, and I remember like a thunderstorm came in while we were either going there or leaving there. And so I was like driving on one of those like six wide, you know, six lane highways. I seventy probably. City. 
and it started downpouring and I was just having like a fucking little bit of a freak out. And we had like, I don't know how, what, four, six fucking CRT TVs in the back, probably with blankets in between the screens and shit, trying not to break them all on the way. Man, land parties were not easy back then. No, and we had all been up all night too. Oh, for sure. I mean, when we're when we're all getting together to play Halo, there's no sleep involved. That that's not a thing. I, yeah, I forget about how stressful it used to be to get together to play games like that. Because now I have a laptop, and like right. if I want to go to a LAN party or something, I just it fits in just, a tote bag. Yep. And I'm good. No, it was we would have like a couple bags and a TV, because let's not forget how big and cumbersome the consoles were too. Yeah. Just all the controllers and the routers and the LAN cables and everything. It was good times. But that's all we had. I think the only reason that we really did it is because you were like oh. one of two people that even had high speed internet. So uh, what else are we gonna do? Yeah, I'm still here. Is Frank still there? Alright. Frank froze as hell. His camera froze. I, yeah, I remember for a while I had a TV, the TV that I would use for anything because it was just the one I had was a big plastic TV with a built-in VCR, so it was even fucking heavier. <laughs> yeah, all the moving mechanical parts and that piece of shit. Fun stuff. And you, you couldn't watch I, DVDs on it through like a PS2 or an Xbox because the VCR would fuck it up. That's hilarious. I remember the first, yeah, can you imagine having those back in the day? I remember whenever I first got a job and got some money and bought a fucking Polaroid HD TV flat screen, you know, like a like a monitor, essentially. Yeah. And that thing was like three, four hundred dollars for like a 17 inch piece of shit. Like, I don't even know. I don't even think it had HDMI imports. I mean, we're talking back. In no, the no, no, no. Not, had, not back then. Yeah. You had the 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 RCA red, Drex. green and blue. Right. Was that the colors? There was. The yes. Yeah, so red, gl- red, green and blue were the three video colors. And then there was a red and a yellow, I think, for the audio. Yeah. The audio. Yeah. Or most white people yellow. probably most people listening. Well, I don't know. I don't know what our audience is. They're either young or old, but it was a it was five cables. And that's how you that was the first HD Those were cables. Yeah. Were, uh, Go- yeah. Were that shit. No, yeah. those are components. Composites Compos- are the red, yeah. white, and yellow. Yeah. And component is yeah. the, the that's composite. Cable. Yeah. But then I, I think I remember looking at that TV recently and the actual resolution was like six forty or something. I don't know. It it claimed to be H D, but like it wasn't actual HD input. But just having a TV that was that much smaller and not a giant fucking desk size device was kind of mind-blowing. Uh, game changer. Oh. Yeah. Not to mention how dangerous those things are. Like, if you end up breaking one of those big tube TVs, it's a fucking bomb. I don't think people realize that. I've got, I have a yeah, scar a from tube. one that we... Yeah, uh, Frank, uh, had, we figured uh, that out. I never realized that until until that day. That That's class what made me realize. Fuck, I mean, it makes dude. sense. Once you see it, then you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you beat on it multiple times before it finally gave way. Not the uh, smartest thing we ever did. Television sets, cathode ray tubes, also what killed uh, uh, the dude from uh, Leonard Skinner, Ronnie Van Sant. Van Sant. Kennedy? It wasn't the, it wasn't was the plane say video crash drone. that killed him. On their private jet, they had a huge CRT TV with a fucking Atari on it to play Pong while they were flying from show to show. After the crash, the TV fell on him and fucking killed him. Yeah, yep. Are you serious? All right, well. Yeah, that's that terrible. music sucked anyways. Yeah, but that... <laughs> wow. And it but wasn't that's a how regular heavy. CRT. That's how heavy like they a, were. It was a big, big one, too. It's not like it was, like... The 32 inch or 24, like it was a big, big one. So, yeah. yeah. The way you know they had that song called "Working for MCA." They were supposed to come out with another song after his death called "Dying by RCA." 
Uh, to you, my friend, earn the joke of the day award. Uh, That's, that seems like a pretty good place to end it then. You gotta leave them laughing. Um, <sighs> Thanks, Javelin. For letting us use your song, Soda Popensky is our little theme, little ditty about Jack and Diane. Thanks, Tyler Edwards, for a the art. Ditty about Jack and Diane. Sucking on a chili dog. Uh... Sucking on a chili dog. Oh, before we, before we. No, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to find my old what? my old iPhone. What? Oh god. Because I'm gonna put it in this thing and I'm gonna try to use the XCloud app so that way I can play yes. I can play Master Chiefies on XCloud. Mobile oh, while you're taking a You can play Blinks the Time Sweeper. I tried to replay it recently and it's so goddamn horrible. It was good when we were kids, because you had to collect the power ups to use your things to Yeah. Yeah, but you could control. You mean time like every game? You're a time sweeper. Look at that. Uh, I think the word of the week then is gonna have to be time sweeper.